The history of audio recording is fascinating. As with many emerging technologies, in only about 150 years, recording sound has gone from an impossibility to something so ubiquitous, many of us don't give it a second thought. The phonautograph, invented in 1857 by Edouard Léon Scott de Martinville, is the earliest known device for recording sound. His phonautograph used a horn attached to a diaphragm which vibrated a stiff bristle which inscribed an image on a smoke-blackened, hand-cranked cylinder. Hello, hello, hello! Old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard to get her poor dog a bone. But when she got there, the cupboard was bare. This was intended as a laboratory instrument for the study of acoustics, creating a thin two-dimensional line that could not be played back directly. In 2008, several of these early phonautograph recordings were recreated by optically scanning them and converting them to digital audio files. This is Edouard Leon Scott, recording Au Clair de Lune on April 9, 1860. The next major invention in audio recording was the phonograph. Thomas Edison experimented with a diaphragm with an embossing point held against a rapidly moving aluminum foil covered cylinder. Eventually, these cylinders were made of wax instead, as it was more reliable and provided better sound and reusability. The machine had two diaphragm and needle units, one for recording and one for playback. When one would speak into a mouthpiece, the sound vibrations would be indented onto the cylinder by the recording needle in a vertical groove pattern. Edison gave a sketch of the machine to his mechanic, John Crusey, to build, which Crusey supposedly did within 30 hours. Edison immediately tested the machine by speaking the nursery rhyme into the mouthpiece, Mary had a little lamb. To his amazement, the machine played his words back to him. In 1877, Thomas Edison went into the patent office. He then placed the new invention on the table, cranked its arm, and let it speak for itself, literally. Shortly afterward, he was awarded patent number 200,521. The next iteration of the phonograph was the gramophone, invented by Emile Berliner in 1887. It revolutionized sound recording and playback. Unlike Thomas Edison's phonograph, which used cylinders, Berliner's gramophone utilized flat discs for recording sound, making it more practical for mass production. His innovation paved the way for the modern music industry, as the disc format was easier to store, replicate, and distribute. The Edison recording cylinders were made out of wax compounds for easy recording and playback. They slowly were replaced by the more durable and easier to store gramophone playback only Berliner records. Berliner started the Victor Talking Machine Company, which further developed the recording, production, and standardization of acoustic audio recording. By the mid 1920s, a massive shift of electrical recording had forever changed the landscape. It was such a drastic development that longtime competitors in the space, the Victor Talking Machine Company and Columbia Phonograph Company, agreed to wait close to a year in order to build up a new digitally recorded catalogue, believing the old one to have been made obsolete. Microphones replaced acoustic horns, electronic signal amplification, and electrically driven record cutting created a much improved sound fidelity, greater dynamic range, and the ability to pick up quieter instruments and voices. For some reason, I'm not getting that funk sound on them drums. They're playing it, but it's not coming out. In the 1930s, German engineers invented 
the magnetophon, an early reel-to-reel -reel magnetic tape recorder. Early models used steel wire as the recording medium, but that was later replaced by a plastic-based tape coated with iron oxide particles that could store the sound magnetically. The magnetic tapes remained largely confined to Germany during World War II. The United States didn't have any magnetic tapes until Ampex developed them in the late 1940s. With tape, musicians were able to record multiple takes, cutting and mixing them later. It also allowed radio and TV broadcasting to be pre-recorded, allowing for a higher production value. The LP-33 record was introduced by Columbia Records in 1948. It allowed for about 30 minutes of playback on each side. LPs were complementary to the early tape recorders. Tape recorders remained mainly a production tool. The LP was the primary way music was sold, collected, and enjoyed by the public, while magnetic tape stayed in the background as the preferred medium for recording professionals. The Dutch electrical company Philips introduced the cassette tape in 1963. Shortly after, the 8-track tape was introduced as in 1965. It wasn't until the early 1970s that the cassette tape became more popular than the 8-track. The Sony Walkman, introduced in 1979, revolutionized the way people experienced music by making it truly portable for the first time. Developed by Sony engineers Nobutoshi Kihara and Masaru Ibuka, the Walkman was a compact, lightweight cassette player with headphones that allowed users to listen to their favorite music privately wherever they went. It was a groundbreaking device that shifted the cultural relationship with music, emphasizing personal, mobile listening. The compact disc, CD, introduced in 1982 by Philips and Sony, revolutionized the music industry by offering a new digital format with superior sound quality and durability compared to vinyl records and cassette tapes. Unlike analog formats, the CD used digital encoding, which reduced noise and distortion, providing crystal clear audio. CDs were also more durable as they were less prone to wear from repeated playing, unlike tapes or records. In 1984, the Discman, the first portable CD player, was introduced by Sony in 1984. The Mini Disc, introduced by Sony in 1992, was a digital audio format that aimed to combine the convenience and portability of the cassette tape with the high quality sound of the compact disc. Mini Discs used magneto optical technology to store compressed digital audio offering better durability and smaller physical size than CDs. The format was designed for both recording and playback, giving users the ability to create and edit their own digital music collections. The MP3 format, with its high compression rates and relatively good sound quality, became the standard for digital audio in the late 1990s and early 2000s especially as portable MP3 players and file-sharing networks like Napster made digital music more accessible. The iPod, introduced by Apple in 2001, was a groundbreaking device that forever changed the way people consumed music and played a major role in the digital music revolution. Although it wasn't the first MP3 player, it was by far the most successful. The original iPod could hold 1,000 songs, a vast improvement over previous players, allowing users to carry their entire music library in their pocket. The iPod's success was amplified by the launch of iTunes in 2003, which provided a legal, user-friendly platform to purchase and organize digital music. This combination of hardware and software reshaped the music industry by making digital downloads the dominant way to purchase music, moving away from physical formats like CDs. 
The device also helped shift the focus from albums to individual songs, as users could easily buy and organize singles. Rhapsody, launched in 2001, was the first legal subscription-based streaming service. It was followed by Pandora and YouTube in 2005 and Spotify in 2008. By the mid-2010s, streaming services like Spotify, Apple Music and others overtook physical sales and digital downloads, becoming the primary way people listen to music. The digital revolution in audio recording, production and distribution has had many positive effects but had also left many smaller artists behind with sites like Spotify, paying their artists only a fraction of a penny per stream. With the advent of AI technology, many musicians and audio creators may find it harder to make a living. Who knows where the future of audio technology may take us, but it is clear that the journey of audio recording has always been driven by innovation. From early experiments with sound capture to the digital age of streaming and artificial intelligence, each leap forward has made music more accessible and personal, while also raising new challenges. As we continue to embrace new technologies, we should remain mindful of their impact on creators and the art of sound itself. The history of audio recording shows that the medium will keep evolving, and it's up to us to shape its future in ways that support both artists and listeners alike.